Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We have a few minutes before we begin. So can we just uh, spend this time in a silent meditation? Just expecting the Lord to bless us today. Expecting the Lord to speak to us today through Sister Hui Hui and also through the scriptures. Let us just do that. And uh, I'd like to invite you to turn to John chapter 1 before we uh, start the service. We want to read John chapter 1, verse 1, all the way to verse 9, because for this particular month, the memory verse is John chapter 1, verse 9. Okay? So let us do that. When you're there, we read together. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. This is the memory verse for this month. The true light that gives light to everyone has, was coming into the world. And the Lord bless the reading of his words. And uh, time now is uh, 9.30. Also want to uh, say a very warm welcome to those uh, folks who are online watching this particular service. Welcome. And uh, let us stand to read God's word in uh, Psalms 105. and prepare our hearts to worship the Lord. Oh, got to the wrong one, huh? Give me a minute. Psalms 105, verse 1 to 4. Let us stand as we read the Psalms. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on His name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. May the Lord bless the reading of these wonderful psalms, exhorting us, calling upon us to go and uh, worship him. Let us just pray and ask the Lord to bless the worship. Lord, we want to just thank you and praise you that we can worship you in this manner. We want to just ask, dear God, that you quiet our hearts, and even as we have many things in our hearts, maybe through the week we are really burdened by many things that clouded our hearts in some, some ways that sometimes we do not understand and we are troubled by some of this. And maybe through the week, we have good news. And indeed, Lord, we have good news that from next, tomorrow, we are released a little bit from the heightened alert for phase two. So, Lord, we want to thank you 
for this time, even in the COVID, the law that we have a silver lining, not in terms of, not only in terms of that we will be released from this uh, particular uh, constraint on us, but Lord, that even through this time, we treasure the fellowship, the physical uh, meeting even more because of the, the uh, lockdown and because of the times where we are separated. So Lord, we want to just pray and ask dear God that you continue to lead us and guide us into close and meaningful fellowship during this time. Lord, we want to praise you and thank you that we can listen to your words today and even as your uh, servant, Hui Hui, speak your words today, Lord, may you grant her wisdom, may you grant her the words to speak from your very heart. So, Lord, we want to thank you, we want to praise you, we are waiting for you to tell us what is your will today. So, thank you, Lord Jesus. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Let us just worship the Lord.
Lead us each day. Please be seated. He leads and guides us. And He always shelters us from the wind. And He always put us in the cleft of the rock. Amen? And if we want to be led, our hearts must be with Him, right? Otherwise, we, we, He wants to lead us and then we don't want to be led. So there's a problem there, right? So as we have sung the song and it really ministered to us, today we have got Sister Hui Hui to speak to us on the topic of how to find God's will. It's taken from the, the book of Josh, Joshua from chapter 1 all the way to chapter 10. So let us all take out our Bibles and then we start reading from chapter 1, okay? And then we will read all the way to chapter 10. Amen? I'm just kidding with you. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sister Hui Hui specifically told me not to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. So, let us uh, turn to those chapters, right? And uh, uh, be led by his word uh, when Hui Hui Sister Hui Hui delivered the message. But before she does that, I'd like to invite her. Because lately we, we have heard that uh, Deacon Hap Singh has, a, has a, a fall and he has hurt himself and uh, hospitalized for three days. Three days? Yeah. So 
I'd like to ask Hui Hui to come and uh, just update us, and then we would like to pray for him. Yeah, so we'd like to spend some time doing that, Sister Hui Hui. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, just share. I mean, yes, he fell a few, few days ago, and then uh, just out of precaution, we brought him to the ER just to see if there was any internal injury. And there's a bit of a small bleeding at the back, you know, of his brain, but it's not dangerous. So he's still under observation uh, just to see whether, you know, whether his condition is stable. So far, it has been stable. Uh, so we are grateful for that. They will do one more scan before they discharge him. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, let us all stand as we uh, just pray for him and ask the Lord to protect him even as he uh, moves about each day and that the, the, the fall will not affect him and that if there's anything, the healing will be complete and will be thorough. And because our Lord is a great Lord. Amen. Let us all pray. Let's commit uh, our beloved deacons of things unto God's hand. Dear Heavenly Father, we like to pray for Deacon Hap Singh at this moment. We thank you, Father, for you love him, and Lord, he's your child. This moment, Father, we pray that Lord, uh, even as he is now in hospital under observation, may you be with him. And Lord, may your presence comfort him. Lord, we like to pray especially that you will heal him completely. Amen. You remove the bead in his brain, mm. and Lord, he will have a speedy recovery. Yes. Yes. God, he can testify your goodness, Father. Yes. And Lord, even at this point of time, he will also meditate upon Jesus Christ. And through your word, Lord, he will be strengthened, Lord. Amen. Let this be a close intimacy moment even though, Lord, he is resting in the hospital. Yeah. I pray especially that, Lord, you will grant the teams of doctors the wisdom from above so that, Lord, they can treat him properly. Amen. In all this, Father, we ask for the peace upon the family. We pray for Sister uh, Sukel and the family members. And, Lord, they will know and see that your wonderful word is going to work in this family. Thank you. Christ, no precious thing we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite Sister Hui Hui now. Again. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks, thanks everyone, for uh, praying for my dad and just remembering him. We really appreciate that. Yeah. We really thank God for... Um, watching over him, actually, because when he fell, it was like the last bit of that walk. He was on his morning walk, and then, you know, he fell quite close to home, and then there was uh, renovation works happening in a house, like two houses down, so the construction worker <laughs> in that house came out and actually carried him because he couldn't walk and carried him home. <laughs> so, I mean, we really... Um, even in our accidents, you know, and falls and all of like, in our injuries and accidents of life, uh, we really see God's hand uh, on us, right? So we just really thank God for that. Okay, this morning, I have to wear my mask, right? Oh, I can't take out. Can't take out. Cannot, is it? 
Okay, so this morning uh, I was asked, invited to speak on this topic, how to find God's will. Okay, I want to, let me just test my clicker. Great, thank you, thank you guys. I want to start by sharing a story of Lauren and Darlene Cunningham. Oh, sorry, before I carry on, I should say, shout out and hi to all those on the internet. Hello, and we have not forgotten you. All right. <laughs> okay, I want to start by sharing Lauren and Darlene Cunningham. They are the founders of YWAM, okay, the organization that I'm a part of. Um, years ago, uh, it was in the mid-1950s, Lauren Cunningham received God's call okay, to pioneer an international mission, sending young people out all over the world to share about the good news. Okay, in that time, uh, he was invited by his aunt to join her on a multi-million dollar business. And then he turned that down because of this call. Then his denominational church asked him uh, to join uh, them on staff, on taking on a ministerial position. And because of this call, he also turned them down. So they were driving home, all right? After all these meetings, they were driving home, and uh, it was a very long drive. So he wrote this in his book called Making Jesus Lord. So in this story at 6 a.m okay after all night drive he passes the steering wheel to his wife darlene he comes to the back and he like you know he's thinking about all the meetings and what he had turned down okay and he's falling asleep he thinks he's asleep suddenly he wakes up everything in the van is just tossing around right and he's flung out of the side window you know and this long desert road just you know it was an accident yeah so he passed out and then when he woke up, then he saw the dust, right? And this remote place, there's no one. There's sticky, and then the suitcase, everything, all their, all their things all strewn around in the, in the desert dust, right? And then he thought, he realized what happened. It was, it was a car accident. Then he quickly went to find his wife, you know? Then he went to the, and his wife was under, underneath one of the suitcase, right? And he, like, pushed it aside, and then... And then there was a deep gash at the back of her head. It was like bleeding. He turned her around and she was like, she was dead. And she, he just cried, you know, he's like, I really, I, you know, he's just so lost and so helpless. And in that moment, he heard a voice speak. And he said, and the voice spoke, Lauren. And he said, yes, Lord. Like who else could it be, right? <laughs> and then God said this. Lauren, will you still serve me? He was like, through his tears, you know. He's like, Lord, I'll serve you. I have nothing left except my life, and you can have that too. And then God said to him, pray for Darlene. And then up to this point, he thought she was dead. You know, he didn't think about praying for her. So he started praying for her, like, fervently and passionately, and suddenly she just kind of drew a breath, like, like kind of like woke up kind of thing. And then shortly after people came, right, drove them to the hospital. And the long and short of it is they survived that accident. They went on from there and they founded youth with a mission. Sometimes when people, uh, they ask this question, how do I find God's will? We want to ask what is behind that question? Why are we asking why we want to find God's will? Is it because we don't want to make the wrong decision? I mean, when we ask that question, usually, okay, it is in a big life decision. Wow, should I, should I marry this person? <laughs> should I take this job? Should I pursue this course of study? You know, and I'm, I want to make sure that this is the right choice. I don't want things to go wrong. I mean, there are many different reasons why we want to find God's will, but my question for us this morning is, we, are we seeking to find out what God's will is because we want to do it no matter what? That is my question for us this morning. So, as I uh, speak uh, this morning on this topic, I'm going to cover uh, three things. Okay, number one, uh, 
Sorry, let me just try to blank this out. How do I do that? Oh, great. Okay, number one, God's heart. God reveals His will to those who are ready to do it. Number two, God's way. God wants us to partner Him every step of the way. And number three, God's glory. God wants to impact the world around us with us. Amen. As I begin, let me just open us with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you tune our ears to hear from you, O oh God, today, because you are the original revealer. You are the one who revealed yourself and your will to the first man on earth, and all through history you have been doing that. And this morning we are turning to you and asking, O oh God, that you reveal your heart and your will uh, to us uh, this morning as your children. Um, members of the local church, RBC. Yeah, we pray, God, that you speak to us this morning and that we will hear and that you will help us to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Number one, God's heart. God reveals his will to those who are ready to do it. Okay, I don't know, I think the text is a bit small, but let me just read uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. Maybe if we can read it all together, okay, just uh, join along with me. Okay, 1, 2, 3. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the U river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Wow, that was a pretty long passage. Good job, everyone. Okay, what do we see from this passage? Number one, the Lord said. <laughs> the Lord spoke, okay? So we see that God is the one who initiated contact with Joshua. Secondly, what does God say? God is very clear with Joshua what he's supposed to do, right? He says, go over the Jordan into the land that I am giving you. And then in blue, okay, the last line, he says, you shall cause these people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. So we see God gave Joshua very clear instructions. Not there, not there, over there, right? Cause the children of Israel possess this land all the way to, okay, so he also tells him where, right? But he doesn't just tell him what he's supposed to do. God also tells him what he is going to do. He says, I am giving this land to you, right? So if you look, and okay, then the last thing is, what else did God say? He said, he didn't just talk business, okay? He didn't just talk mission about what you're supposed to do. He, also, he was also personal with Joshua, right? He told Joshua, I will be with you. Be strong and courageous. When we look overall at the way that God communicated with Joshua, what do we see? He told Joshua what he's supposed to do. He told Joshua what he is going to do. And then he also told Joshua, uh, you know, he also gave like some extra words, you know. And then if you look at the way that he talks about the land, I mean, actually, oh, actually God, you can just tell Joshua, go and take the land. Okay, from here to here, the, ge the geo coordinates from here to here, done, right? <laughs> Don't have to ask questions, okay? But then you see the way that God communicates. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. Wow. But must he put it across like that? Everywhere you step, you know, everywhere you step on this land, I give it to you. <laughs> this is not business talk, right? He's going over and above what he needs to tell you. 
right? We see from this long passage, God is an over-communicating God. God loves to communicate. He loves to speak. When we think about the first five books of the Bible, who is calling who? Who is calling who? Right? God is the one who called Adam. Adam, where are you? <laughs> oh, I'm hiding. Right? Abraham, go. Isaac, stay in this land. Don't go to Egypt. God appeared to Jacob. Right? Jacob and Esau, yeah. Jacob in a dream. Right? So we see that all through history, God is the one who initiates, He reveals Himself, His will, His heart to men. Sometimes, sometimes we have this idea, all right, or thinking that God's will is, um, sorry, that God's will is hard to find. We have this idea that God is hiding or that it's difficult, you know, to find out what He wants, right? We must go hunting for it. Well, we must fast and pray night and day so that I can, I can hear from him, you know. Is she the right one? <laughs> okay. So, so sometimes we think hey, that God is hiding himself, but nothing could be further from the truth because God loves to reveal himself. Okay. But next slide. God wants us to know him and his will. But we must understand, okay, we must understand one thing. When God reveals His will, He is, I mean, when Dad tells you, when Dad tells you to do something, is it for your consideration? It's for your obedience. <laughs> because He's dead. The Lord is God. When He reveals His will, it's not for us to consider, it's not for our information, it is for our submission. We must consider Joshua, what kind of man, what kind of man was Joshua that God over-communicated his will to? In Numbers chapter 14, Moses sent out 12 spies. Ten of them came back and said, you know what, there are giants in the land. Let us choose a leader, go back to Egypt, to the land of our slavery. How about that? Okay, Joshua and Caleb were the only ones who said, if the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into the land and give it to us. Only do not rebel against the word of the Lord. Joshua and Caleb valued submitting to God's will above all else, above possible death, right? Above their personal safety. In Exodus 33, verse 11, we see that when Moses goes to the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, Joshua will continue to remain there even after the meeting is over. You know, Joshua was a man who valued God's presence to a person who loves to do God's will and who enjoys and loves God's presence. God comes and reveals His will. In fact, He over-communicates. He, he doesn't tell you only what you must do. He also tells you what He will do. He will tell you His heart. Our God is a relational God. What does it mean for us? Instead of asking the question, what is God's will? We should be asking this question, am I ready to do His will? Am I ready to do His will? No matter what it takes, no matter what it costs me, if you are someone who is ready to do God's will, God will come and find you. <laughs> God will take the initiative to reveal His will to you. I'm reading, I was reading a book called um, I Walk, He Leads. I'm walking, He is leading. And the author of this book said, you think about the people that God called in the Bible. They were not specifically looking out for God's call, right? David was not asking to be king, you know? Samuel was not asking to be a prophet, right? Uh, Barnabas and Saul were not asking to be missionaries. It was in a time of prayer. They were already in God's will. They were already walking in God's will. And in, that, in their QT, God speak to them. 
if we are ready, God will speak to us in a relational context because we are already at the dining table, because we always have dinner together. So at this dinner table, suddenly Jesus says, hey, could you do this for me? <laughs> okay. So I tell this story. Um, when I was seeking God's will, Okay, I told this story before, I think, so please bear with me for hearing again, but um, I reshare to make the point, okay? When I was working and um, I was thinking, oh God, you know, should I go and join full-time ministry? You know, I was so stressed, I was so busy and all, uh, and then I thought, ah, oh, if I pour my energy out into full-time ministry the way I pour my energy out in my full-time work, right, wouldn't that be more lasting, <laughs> right, more abiding? And then one day, when I was in the car, okay, I'm drifting, okay, I'm not really, uh, I think someone was driving mine. Anyway, I was like lost in my thoughts. And then, I, and then I just felt God say, I felt this question come to my mind. And the question was, wait, wait, if you had to choose between a life of impact and a life of surrender, which would you choose? Then the second question he asked is, if you had to choose between full-time ministry and full-time devotion to me, which will you choose? And that was, that was the lesson, la. the lesson is this, wait, wait, you don't have to serve me, you know, you don't have to be full, you don't have to be fully devoted to me only when you're in full-time ministry. You can serve me where you are right now, full-time, because it's not about where you are, it's about where your heart is, who is your focus, who are you focusing on? So years, a few, well, a few years later, okay, I, you know, left my job, okay, felt the Lord lead me to quit my job, I went and studied in the YWAM School of Biblical Studies, and in that time, now I'm asking again, now I'm asking again, God, where are you leading me, right? Um, but this time, I changed my question. The question is not, God, you know, sh are you, you know um, is it marketplace, you know, is it full-time ministry? Now I say to God, whatever you show me, help me to do it. Whatever you reveal to me, help me to obey. You want to shift our focus from asking, God, what is it that you want me to do to God? When you show it to me, help me to be ready to do it. It's not the task, it is the person. Help me to be someone who submits and obeys your will. Number two, God wants us to partner Him every step of the way. In Jericho chapter 6, Okay, God gives his battle plan, his very clear instructions, march around the city, how many times? Okay, once for six days. And then how many people have seven priests carry the trumpets uh, of ram's horn in the front? Then on the seventh day, okay, the seventh day you march seven times with the priests blowing. And then when, they he when everyone hears that you make a long blast, well, I tell you, God is very clear. You cannot miss it. When only when he makes a long blast, then have everyone make a great great shout, and then the walls will collapse and the army will go in, everyone straight in. Okay, he, okay God is a clear communicator, okay, I, I, I love that about him. <laughs> and then with I, this is the second battle, God says to Joshua, set an ambush where? Behind the city. So you see that God gave, very, gave instruction, right? How are you supposed to take it? Take the city. Then we come to the, the story of Gibeon. I think all of us are more or less familiar, okay? <laughs> okay, with, with what happens here. What happens is that um, the men of Gibeon, they hear what happened to Jericho and to Ai, and they get scared, right? Because they know, actually prophesied in the time of Abraham already, the land of Canaan is going to be judged by God if they do not repent. They are among the inhabitants, okay? They are also going to be destroyed with the rest. How? Well, we better how to save our skins, man. So they, they dress up. All right, they put on like worn sandals, they are, you know, all kinds of, take out, take the bread that is very crumbly, you know, pretend they come from a very far away place. Then they come to Joshua and the men with all of their, looking very haggard and look at, like, you know, travel very far and they say, we are from very, very far away. Make a peace treaty with us. Okay, and then, and then um, Joshua and the men ask, how, how can we be for sure, you know, like, what if you are actually among us? They say, no, 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 take our word for it. You see, you look at our wine skins, you look at our bread. And then, and then they said, 
It says here in the Bible, the Israelites, they sampled, they inspected their provisions, but they did not inquire of the Lord. And so Joshua made a treaty uh, a peace treaty with them, let them live, right? They, the leaders ratified the treaty. Three days later, they realized that they are just their neighbor. <laughs> now their hands are tied, you know, <laughs> right? They are, wow, why do you make life so difficult for yourself, Joshua? That's my question, right? You're between God's word and your peace treaty, right? Stuck. But anyway, they made the decision, okay, that they will honor their peace treaty because they made this treaty before the Lord. Okay, God graciously allowed for this, okay, in, the, in His grace. Okay, so I asked this question, right? I asked this question, why? I mean, until this point, God has been speaking, right? Why did they not? Because the, the, the author, okay, especially, oops, especially highlights, did not inquire of the Lord. I mean, is it because he would not speak? Would he not help them? Would God not know of everyone? God, of course, will know that they are being deceived. I ask this question, but we also need to ask ourselves this question. Why? The question is, do we? Do we inquire of the Lord? Does God not know? Would he not help? Would he not reply? And so, the lesson I take from this, okay, the best of us, this generation, this Joshua generation is the best of, okay, <laughs> all the generations of Israel. The best of us still have this blind spot. What is this blind spot? That we obey the Lord without involving Him. We obey the Lord and we do not ask Him. In YWAM, okay, we will... Um, you know, we, we pray, we seek, we hear God's voice, okay? They say, oh, okay, uh, God is, what, what is God saying? You know, everyone kind of like, oh, then more or less everyone say, okay, I think God is leading us to run an uh, outreach event, like end of the year. Okay, then quickly go already, chong already. <laughs> you know, nobody asks when, how, just go. You know, then we, he, he already said, that is the thing, okay? He revealed, he revealed to us that one thing, we go and do it, take the hill, right? Go and take the hill. That's what we are very good at. But we don't ask how, when, when you want us to do it. Uh, why you want us to do it? You know, we, we stop short at the communication and we run very fast with the task. God wants to be in the process with us. He is the main sponsor. He commissioned the project. He gave you the word. He said, go and do it, right? But he wants to also be in it with us. But more important, the more important reason why we should be consulting him is not just because he is God, King, and he's the one who called us to do it, but because of relationship. Because of relationship. A friend was asking me, you know, I was having this uh, coffee chat with her. She's in her 50s, okay? She's... Um, uh, a bit older than me, and, and then she asked, actually, you know, I was thinking, uh, why do we consult our parents? I mean, she's already in her 50s, right? Why, on some important decisions, right, do we still consult our parents? I mean, we grow up, we are grown up, we know how to make our own minds, but what happens when we consult our parents? We show them that we value their input. They know that they don't, they know more or less you have, you know, have decided, make your mind, right? They know what you're thinking, but... They also would like to share their thoughts. They also want to find out a bit more. I mean, why do we consult our, our parents when they make, okay, young parents, okay, when they make a decision, moving house, buying certain furniture? No need to ask the kids, lah. Why, why do parents do that? Is it to say, okay, is this model better than the other? No, it is, to, it is because of relationship. You want to involve them, right? Why do we consult the Lord? At the very least, it is for relationship because we do it together with Him. We say, Lord, we want to know what you are thinking, right? So this same friend, um, she is in, years ago, was in a ministry in YWAM called YWAM Associates. YWAM Associates is a ministry that serves people who have left YWAM, help them to transition to their life 
uh, back, you know, after missions, etc. Right? Uh, so that wherever they are in the world, they continue to be uh, mission-minded, to be disciple-makers. So this is the ministry. So in Singapore, uh, we, uh, this ministry will, will hold annual camps. Okay, to refresh and excite people again, etc. So in this one year, the leadership of this ministry, they made this decision. They said we will not move unless, until we hear from the Lord. Yeah, we will intentionally wait and not move until we hear. So that year, they came together, they prayed, right? Usually they hold these camps overseas where it's cheaper, okay? So anyway, they prayed and they asked God, Okay, where, you know, where you want to hold it? He said, Singapore. I said, okay, Singapore very expensive, okay. <laughs> but then, days later, it turns out that a church opened up their premise and let them use it. Okay, so now they are okay. Then they asked God, um, now they asked God, ah, yeah, okay, so in the time of prayer, uh, God said to them, hold a love feast, which is a dinner, Wow, cost is already like, okay, you want to hold a love feast? They say, okay, we will do it. Where? At the hotel next to the church. <laughs> so they go and book, okay, they book the restaurant at the hotel. And then now we came to how much to charge for the camp fee. Usually what, what will Singaporeans do? They project lah, huh? total cost, total attendees, estimate, break even. So they bring their fee, the pricing to God. You know, and also ask about this. Uh, and then God said, reduce. Reduce your fee. <laughs> now they are in a deficit. <laughs> already to set the price uh, is already faith step. Uh. Now you want to reduce it. And then God said, why don't you seed into it yourself? <sighs> so they seeded into it. They gave towards, okay. Then after that, the miracles start to flow in. During the camp, one of the days, they felt prompted to pass, uh, ask for a love gift. Lah. They didn't have like a bag or what, they just took some bed sheet, you know, then makeshift, and then they just passed around, like, not really expecting anything, lah, okay? but they just follow the Lord's leading. And when the money came back, oh my goodness, people gave so much. It overflowed, you know. Now they are not only able to pay off all their camp expense, they have excess. Then my friend said, oh, I thought, well, with this excess, well, next year it's going to be better. Right, because you have seed money. But then after that, they prayed and then God said, give the money away. So they gave the money all away. <laughs> and, then, and then the dinner, the restaurant. The restaurant, you must book number of packs beforehand. So it's a commitment now. You don't know how many will show up, right? But you just pay first. Then on the day of the dinner, the love feast, right? They had favor with the restaurant manager. Then the restaurant manager said, hey, it's okay. We just charge you based on number of people who show up. Yeah. So that also reduced their cost. And then one of the people who prayed together and said, hey, do you notice uh, in this restaurant, there are round tables with white tablecloths. Why is that important? Because when we were praying, someone saw round tables and white tablecloths. Now these, these ladies, they run this camp year after year, right? But this camp was so different. When they involve God in that process, you experience his miracles. He signed off, his signature is on <laughs> that event, right? The things that we do are not the same when we seek God and partner him in the process. Amen. The third point, God's glory. God wants to impact the world around us with us. So, we know the city of Gibeon, they made a peace treaty with Israel. When the kings of the other Canaanite cities hear about it, they come and they want to attack Gibeon, okay? Uh, and then the Gibeonites call out to Israel and say, come and help us, we are under attack. Okay, so after an all-night march, okay, let's read this together, okay, one, two, three. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. 
the Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road going up to Beth Horon and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. As they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Azekah, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them and more of them died from the hail. They were killed by the swords of the Israelites. After this, there is a short story of how Joshua calls out to God and say, hold the sun and moon in the sky, right? And God did it. And the, and the word of the Lord says, no, until this time or after this time, there has been no time in history where God heard the cry of a man in this way and stopped, you know, the sun in the sky until they defeated their enemies. What do we see from this story? What do we see from this story? More people died, right, from the hailstones, right? God threw them into a panic. You know, God, the Israelites played the minor part. God played the major part. When we partner, um, okay, sorry, yeah. Wait, do I have another slide? Right. Yeah, it says, surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. When we partner, when we partner the Lord in battle, number one, we get to experience His might in the battle with us. But more importantly, number two, the world around sees that He is God. The Lord of Israel, He is God. He threw the hailstones down. He stopped the sun in the sky. The glory does not go to us. We want people to see the Lord of RBC the Lord of our families, the Lord of my personal life, the Lord, He is God. He is creator of the heavens and the earth. He is a God of justice in His hands. He give and take away life. He is God. When does that happen? When we partner Him. When we say, Lord, we are ready to do Your will and to do it together with You. And then He will show the world through, through us, through our partnership with us, that he is the Lord and fulfill his own prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want to end with a story that I read in this book called Praying with Power. Okay, and it's a story about this church called Kenya Prayer Cave. So it's a story in Africa. Okay, <laughs> right. It's a remote place right, far away from us, but, and it's a different time period in the 1980s, but it is the same God, okay? So in this story, uh, there's a pastor and his wife, his name is Pastor Thomas Muti. In the late 1980s, okay, they were returning to Kenya, and then when he was praying one day, he heard uh, the Lord said, I want you to plant a church in Kiambu. Kiambu is a city in Kenya, which is not far from where he is, okay? And uh, he does not have church planting experience, you know, by the way. That's not what he does. <laughs> okay, so there are many reasons to reject this call, but he says, okay, all right. And, oh, by the way, Kiambu also at that time was known as the murder capital of Kenya because they had so many murders in each month. It's the level of crime, violence, corruption, all kinds of things. Nobody want to go to this city. Okay, so he's very reluctant, right? And... Last but not least, it was also known as a preacher's graveyard because pastor after pastor who tried to plant a church there, they would soon leave. Nobody can stay, yeah, because of spiritual oppression and all kinds of things. So after Pastor Muti received this word, oh, say, okay, we obey. Okay, we go and plant a church in Kiambu, but we don't immediately go, yeah. He and his wife, they took six months to fast and pray. And in that time of... So this is a story, uh, of how God, how man partners God in spiritual battle. We see in the book of Joshua how the Israelites partner God in military battle. Here, we see it in our church today, we partner God in spiritual battle. So they partner the Lord in prayer, okay? And in that time, in that six months of prayer and fasting, God revealed to them the spiritual forces that this city was under, that they were under oppression. And then God also revealed to them the name of the principality over the city. And he said it was witchcraft. Later on, they discover 
that there is a well-known sorcerer in that city who does fortune telling, you know, who casts curses, all kinds of things, and she, and she has a lot of influence. City officials will come to her to have their fortunes told, okay? So, after they fast and pray, they go in, they start a church, and the spiritual warfare begins. She will come every, every week, you know, and she would, uh, what would she do? She would perform magic and cast spells and curses against the church. Then she told the city officials, eh, I cannot help you already, you know, this, because of this new church in the area, they're cutting off my line of communication. So making life difficult now for them. Then after that, other cities like pastors and churches started to speak against them. So they even come under fire of their own, <laughs> their own church, as in the church of God. So, wow, the, the warfare was like, so they started, so, so they prayed, they prayed 24 hours, seven days a week, they just all the time praying, but the oppression still happening. Then God revealed to them, God showed Pastor Muti, you must get intercessors. Yes, people are praying, but you must get people on the job interceding. So then Pastor Muti asked, who? Who shall I ask? And then God gave him five names. So then every day they are praying. But then the oppression continued. Then God showed him, then God showed Pastor Muti again, you must get armor bearers, people to cover the intercessors when they are praying. So among the five intercessors, then two will cover the one who is praying on that day. So they continue like this. So you, you tell me what I do, what you tell me what I do, what. And after they got the armor bearers and they started to intercede in this way, the spiritual oppression began to stop. And then things begin to turn, okay? Then one day the sorcerer is arrested, okay? She is arrested, why? Because the opinion, the public opinion in the city began to turn against her. There were mysterious road accidents happening near her house and people suspected that she is causing these things to happen. So the police raided her home, discovered like, you know, snake and you know, a huge python which they shot dead. And then, and then basically she had to leave town. And after she left, right, after she left, he said, the city started to change. And even people in the city noticed, you know, they start to see there is a relationship between the powers, the spiritual powers that they are experiencing and the things that they are seeing, because the city became, the economy began to revive. Crime rates began to fall. There was less and less violence. Even the hardest, the most notorious criminals, right, in the city came to the Lord and attend their church. Then Pastor Bodhi had so much favor with the police chief. He said, you know, you can go, I give you permission, go anywhere in the city, whatever time of the day, turn your loudspeaker however loud you want, you just do it, you don't need permit. You know? <laughs> Could Pastor Muti have done all of this? Can he cut spiritual oppression? Can he turn the economy? Can he soften people's hearts? He cannot, right? Pastor Muti play the minor part. God play the major part, right? What, God, what Pastor Muti did was that he obeyed God. He sought God at every step. He partnered the Lord, and the Lord did something cosmic, at a macro level, at a city level, right? And it transformed that city through a spiritual battle that he fought on behalf of this church. That was years ago. It's in another part of the world, but it is the same God. When we commit ourselves to obeying the Lord, to do His will together with Him, to seek Him not to do our will, but to do His will, to seek Him because we love Him, because of relationship with Him, and we say to the Lord, whatever you tell me, I will do. God will use you. God will come looking for you. What is His will? He wants the kingdom of God to invade this world. He wants to see the kingdom of God established, advancing, light to defeat darkness at your workplace, in your community, in your families, all over this world. Amen? <laughs> that is His will. And we say, Lord, use me. Lord, I'm ready to do it. He will come and He will speak to us. <laughs> How shall we do this together, right? <sighs> so as I close, 
I want to give us, I want to challenge us. Okay, as I close, I want to challenge us. Are we ready? Are we ready to say to God, whatever you say, I will follow. Right? Whatever you say, I will do. That could be a bit of a far call, okay? But then if that is too far, we can ask a second question. And that question is, God, can you make me someone who is ready to follow you? No matter the cost, right? No matter the price. So I want to put this two challenge out there, all right? And I'm not, I mean, I, I'm not challenging myself in this right now because I am challenging you, right? So I just want to pray for you, okay? If you want to say to the Lord, Lord, okay, our first challenge is a bit higher, okay? Lord, whatever you say, God, I will do, right? You show me, I will do. And the second challenge is, Lord, make me someone who is ready to follow you no matter the cost. Okay, I want to invite you to respond to these two things, okay? So all, all eyes closed and all heads bowed, and I'll just, and I'll pray for you. So anyone who wants to respond to the first challenge, okay, I will pray God's grace over you, okay? Anyone who says to the Lord, Lord, whatever you say, I will do, right? Okay, I want to pray for you. Lord, whatever you call me to do, I will do. You know, God said... Uh, I can't remember who it was who said, you give me 12 men, right, who, no, who wants nothing but the will of God to be done, and I promise you I will change the world. God is looking, looking for men and women who say, yes, I will follow you. I want you to raise your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Okay. Now you can put your hand down. Now second, the second, the second challenge, Lord, make me Okay, I don't feel confident you ask me to do what I do what, but you make me someone who will obey you no matter what. Make me this person. Make me become this person. I want you to raise your hand. Okay, I see your hands. I see your hands, thank you. Okay, put your hands down. Lord, you see, these are your children. They are not responding to me, you know, or to like... The, the message or Lord, they are responding to you, O oh God. They raise their hands before you. Father, I want to pray, God, for those who have raised their hands to say, Lord, whatever you show me, I will do. And Father God, I pray, God, I pray, Father God, that you will speak to them. Lord, Lord that you will pay a personal visitation, God, to them. You know, Father, to speak to them about this commitment that they have made. I pray also, Father, that you will help them and those who raise their hands to the second challenge. Uh, Father, I end the first challenge. I pray, oh, Father God, that you will help them, Lord. That, Father, that you will help them to die to self. Help them to kill their self-will. Help them to humble themselves before you. Father, I pray that you increase their faith, that you build their faith in you, so that whenever and whatever you call them to do, they are ready to respond and to obey. Father, I pray this is a work that no human being, not even us, can do in ourselves, but we are looking to you and ask that you do it in us, O oh God. You change our hearts to become men and women, to be children, children of God who want nothing but your will to be done and who are 100% confident of you and 100% trust in you. I pray, O oh Father, for, I plead for the blood of Christ to cover us. I pray, O oh Father, for an outpouring of grace over us. We lift our commitment and our response to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Hui Hui, for the wonderful message, encouraging us to be living in His will. Are we? Are we living in His will? 
And the next associated question must also be, are we living in His guidance? So that actually calls for a very close and daily relationship with Him. And how do we do that? It's every day abiding, every day remembering. Any, anything that you have read from His Word, our, any, any, any passage, even one word from the Bible, that is communication with our God. Amen? And also communication with His family. All of us here, I was just having a, a very brief conversation with somebody who came very early this morning and, and, and we were just talking about praying for each other and remembering each other. Sometimes I, I have uh, some very faithful brothers. They will unfailingly text me every morning, unfailingly. Sometimes I fail them. I feel very, I feel very bad. And each time I receive their text, I know they are praying for me. And I pray for them too. So this is the kind of uh, abiding with each other, having close communion with each other. Although the COVID has separated us in, in some, some ways, but we, in our hearts we crave. There's always this silver lining. I was thinking about it this morning as I came in the MRT. Everywhere I go, it's almost like empty. And then the first person I see, oh, I feel so good, you know. So why do I feel so good? It's because I don't even know the person, actually. <laughs> why do I feel good to see one, one soul, you know, the guy who's sitting there at the, at the MRT, you know, that, that uh, everywhere is so, so, like, empty and desolate. The first, first person that appears is like the, uh, another human being. So our daily walk with our God will bring us to know His will. And our daily walk with Him actually will bring us to a relationship with Him that we can trust His guidance. And this is something that I have learned today. Uh, thank God for this message. And uh, may we rise to give glory to God. We want to just uh, sing in our hearts, okay? Church, let's receive the benedictions together. May the grace of the Son, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Some brief announcements. Uh, on the 27th of June, it will be the Thai Oikos. So you we have friends who have yet to come to know the Lord and uh, you know of any Thai Christians, please invite them to our church. And also today, uh, um, church camp briefing, ah yes, church camp briefing, uh, Patricia will brief us. Our church camp will be this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday, uh, yeah, this coming. So Patricia, please. Uh, yeah, online church camp. Yeah, 
So just to remind everyone, uh, the registration, as I've uh, not, uh, announced in the uh, fire meeting group chat a uh, couple of days ago, uh, it will all be online. So that Sunday, don't come to church. That Saturday, also don't come to church. Yeah, so um, please register by 17 so that I can collate. And especially for those who wishes to have uh, the $15 for per, per lunch meal, um, being blessed to you all, um, uh, please, please do indicate in the form. There's, there's, a, there's an option in the form, so please do indicate and uh, indicate correctly. Uh, for, for, for whoever who is the applicant who is actually applying on behalf of whoever you are inviting, I will make you the responsible person to receive that whatever $15. Then I leave it to you to go and distribute it to the relevant people. Yeah, so uh, please do it by 17th because I need time to just uh, sort out the admin work. And um, if it's pay now, pay la, uh, you'll be receiving it directly from me. La. It's easier for the church. So uh, please take note. And um, what else? Uh? Program? Um, well, basically, uh, we will have the regular program like an uh, online seminar, like a webinar. So uh, it's 9 to 5, but um, uh, there will be breaks in between, between 9 to 12 and uh, 1 to 5. That is where, the, that's where Pastor Juan would, would have uh, his material shared. So we will leave. Um, we will leave the 12 to 1 as a, as a lunch time. Uh, if can, possibly, because since we are all now doing it online and we are doing it through Zoom, and in order to, you know, have the feel of the camp, I, I implore you, you, you all, to switch on your videos. Eat in front of the videos with, so that we can actually, you know, chat as per usual. Yeah, um, don't be shy. Don't switch off your video. So that, open so that we can all see everybody's faces. Lah. Yeah. So uh, I reiterate again, this coming Saturday, Sunday, don't come to church. Yeah. Um, and then following Sunday, right, uh, if, just for everyone uh, to know, we'll be rearranging our seats given the new ruling. It'll be five per groupings now. So yeah. Yeah, I think I'm done with you. Okay. She said that too. Okay, let us just uh, join our hearts to just give thanks to the offering. Let us all pray. Lord, we want to praise you. We want to thank you uh, for today's message, the Lord, that you have uh, given us. The Lord, to trust you and to follow you. And uh, whatever you ask us to do, Lord, may our hearts just be looking to you always following you and obeying you. So, Lord, we want to thank you also for the, the offering, the Lord, that uh, we have uh, just uh, put it back into your kingdom. Ask you, God, that you help us to use all these things so that, Lord, your work be done on earth. Give thanks to you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As I mentioned, today's uh, 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 the, this uh, monthly verses which we have already read in the morning, right? So do remember to go home and to memorize it. So next week, uh, there will be a no, uh, next week there's a church camp. Maybe during the church camp, we have a test, okay? Yeah. Thank you for worshipping with us. May the Lord bless you to the week until we meet uh, on the following week, right? Thank you.